We now present For the Record. Just ahead, a debate for the history books kicks off in Wisconsin. All through the next half hour, we are breaking down what's next. I was so struck. It is as hectic as it looks inside. Men's keep coming at me with that ex with the experience differential. You don't know if you're going to get punched in the nose. You don't know or punched in the belly. You don't know where it's going to come from. Welcome to For the Record, I'm Naomi Coles. Milwaukee attracting the eyes of the country this week as it played host to the first presidential debate of the 2024 cycle featuring eight Republican primary hopefuls. Take a listen to the highlights. War that I will declare as U.S. President will be the war on the federal administrative state. I mean, look, Joe Biden has weakened this country at home and abroad. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. We need to bring The conduct is beneath the office of president of the United States. President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. In your book, you had much different things to say about Donald Trump than you're saying here tonight. That's and, not true. Well, it is very true. That is not it's true. It's very true. I read it, because and I know. Look, I know. Between bad not, behavior and illegal behavior, way, Chris, and you as a prosecutor way, should know better. Yeah, I, you know what? Now on the heels of GOP leaders criticizing national leadership on the debate stage, Democratic leaders across America are voicing reaction to their proposals. Joining me to break this all down, the chair for the Wisconsin Democrat Party, Ben Wickler. Always good to have you on the show. It's great to be with you, Naomi. You were in Milwaukee. I heard you did 23 interviews the, the, the night of uh, Wednesday, the debate. Uh, talk to me through the, your just initial reaction to what you heard that night. I was so struck because I think most Americans want either party to be competing by laying out their vision for how to protect people's basic freedoms and how to expand opportunity and prosperity for everyone. That's kind of the task that a politician should have. But instead, on that debate stage, we saw Republican candidates for president competing for who could better uh, advance abortion bans and no vision whatsoever for addressing the child care crisis in our country or building the on the progress of the green energy economy and bringing down costs. These are things that even Republicans were running on last year, and now they've basically abandoned a vision for how to make our country better, which is something President Biden and Vice President Harris focus on every day. Do you think the greatest threat to your party was on that stage on Wednesday? <laughs> I, in some ways, I think the greatest threat to Democrats is the possibility that people will think that none of these people can win. And I think in 2016, there was a, a problem where people thought there was no way Trump could win that election. And so some people stayed home. Some people voted for, you know, long shot candidates that didn't have a chance. In 2024, people should make no mistake that their ballot, especially in Wisconsin, of all states, could tip the entire country, the entire Electoral College. This needs to be a massive turnout election if we don't want to go into the kind of chaos that we saw in that debate stage. Okay, but like, let me make you be more specific. Do you want to see Biden-Trump, or do you want to see, let's throw out her name, Biden-Haley? Uh, well, I will say this. Donald Trump was an unmitigated disaster for this country, and especially for the future of freedom and democracy in our Constitution. And so I don't want him anywhere close to the presidency. I would much rather that he decides, you know, I tried to overturn the last election. I don't want to do this. That said, if, you know, any of these people, they would be really just as bad. I mean, person after person after person, Nikki Haley, uh, she gave a whole speech about how she doesn't think they'll have enough votes to pass a national abortion ban. They have one goal in mind. They want to they want to start with overturning Roe versus Wade, but then put in place abortion bans like the one we have in Wisconsin for the entire nation. I don't think any of them is ready to, to be the president of the United States. We heard some, we heard some interesting proposals that night. Uh, a couple people floated removing the entire uh, U.S. Department of Education. Wisconsin is full of swing voters and voters who are kind of right on that edge, right? We've had that conversation a million times when I've interviewed you before. What do you? How do you think that kind of message of removing entire federal agencies place to Wisconsin's swing voters, the ones that you're battling for come 2024? The idea of eliminating agencies is something that uh, a bunch of Republican candidates have floated year after year after year. I, do you remember Rick Perry saying, we should eliminate I five, and Rick I Perry. don't remember which ones they should be. It's, I don't think it's something that speaks to people who might go either way. It's something that speaks to people who definitely 100% are going to vote Republican. They might vote for one presidential candidate after another. The thing that I really ground my politics in that I think Democrats do best when we ground our politics in is that voters vote based on what affects them in their lives, the kind of lives they want to lead, the kind of person that they want to be. 
agencies can feel far off sometimes. I think the questions around especially abortion and also these questions around whether we should support family supporting jobs, whether we should be you know, rebuilding our roads and installing solar panels and doing all these things that build a kind of clean energy economy with prosperity for everyone and whether our kids will grow up in a world covered in massive wildfires and floods or whether we'll actually tackle climate change. Those are the kinds of things that people want answers on. And I mean, again, another moment from the Republican debate. They were asked, are humans contributing to climate change? Not one raised their hands. This was on the hottest day of the year in Milwaukee in the hottest year in recorded human history. It's a shocking kind of walking away from one of the most fundamental crises of our time. You're pre pre uh, previewing one of my other segments for me. Stay tuned for that later in the show. Uh, you're the strategy guy. You lead the state party. You've led them to a historic number of wins in the last few years that you've been head. What's your strategy going next? What's your strategy for, I mean, I saw you on Twitter raising money all night. Uh, what's your strategy going forward after this? So. We have one secret ingredient at the Democratic Party, which is constant, constant organizing. And what I mean by that is people knocking on the doors in their neighborhoods, calling friends and family, having conversations, posting on social media, doing all these things. Because, you know, as much as I think it's critical to communicate through debates and through the media and all this stuff, the people that people trust are the best and most powerful messengers. And so we are all over the state of Wisconsin right now having those conversations more than a year out from the election and we won't stop until the polls close and frankly then we'll keep going after that for the 2025 Supreme Court race. Democracy is not a spectator sport, it's a life sport. It's like pickleball. You can play all the way through all year long and that's exactly what we'll be doing. The man that does not sleep, Ben Wickler, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Coming up uh, right ahead, uh, join myself and my, our political reporter in breaking down a little bit behind the scenes of what goes down on debate night.